Good to see you, and welcome and good to see you again on another Sunday morning. It's the time when the trees change colour. And there's something I've noticed, the older I get, the beautiful colours, as they turn from the greens to the yellows to the reds to the browns. But, uh, something I appreciate. But we'll start with this one, for the, with this thing. For the beauty of the earth, for the beauty of the skies, for the love which from our birth over and around the skies. Father unto you we raise is our sacrifice of praise. Coffee morning on Thursday 10am, then Girls Brigade 
6.30 p.m. on Friday. Next Sunday, the 17th, in the morning, it will be a, a video from the Midfield Evangelical Church, or Midfield, as I like to say, um, and Jan and Bible class. And then in the evening, oh no, so just to say, communion will form part of that service. And then in the evening, next Sunday, we're expecting Norman Books to come along. Streets to remember in prayer are the Cedars, the Crofts, and Townville Walk. The UEC Church to remember in prayer is. I lost it. We, well, we thank them generally. For, the, for Keith Brent, the chairman, and all the churches who form part of the UEC, and for missionary prayers this week, we pray for the persecuted church who puts there. So don't forget to pick this up and have a good read and study. You'll see also on there what we have planned for the evening on Sunday, the 24th of October, over our. Bible Sunday. Now let's have our reading for our next reading. Mark chapter 3, starting at verse 13. Jesus went up on the mountainside and called to him those he wanted, and they came to him. He appointed twelve, designating them apostles, that they might be with him, and that he might send them out to preach and to have authority to drive out demons. These are the twelve he appointed. Simon, to whom he gave the name Peter, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, to them he gave, he gave the name uh, Boanerges, which means son of thunder, Andrew, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Thomas, James, son of Atheus, uh, Thaddeus, Simon the Zealot, and Judas Iscariot, who would uh, who betrayed him. Let us sing another chorus now. And you stand or sing, I shall stand or sing. <coughs> Sit and sing if you want to. Build it, for I'm building a people of power. For I'm building a people of power, and I'm making a people of praise. And we'll
to be fishers of men and women. In a way that you know you would want us to, to work, Heavenly Father. But Lord, we also thank you that we can bring, we can talk to you in prayer, bring our prayers and our supplications and our praises. There are many things that we could pray for. Lord, one thing that's been brought to our attention this morning is the second reading on Friday the 22nd of October the um, assisted dying bill. Lord, there is a very serious uh, um, piece of register, legislation that we would not agree with. The Lord, you know, this tells us what we could and can't could do to make our points of view um, be given to our local MP or even to the, the, the peers in the, in the laws. Lord, we can also pray about this. We do value life. We, we know life at the end can be very difficult. But Lord, we wouldn't agree with assisted dying like that. Lord, you call us home. You call your servants home to heaven. Lord, we do pray for our government. Continue to pray for our government. Lord, that they might consider you. That they might consider your, your rules, your laws, your creation, or how things were created. Lord, may they open a Bible. We would pray. We do pray for missionary societies, we, and those who persecuted church. We try to bring it to our attention. But Lord, we thank you for the example to us of the persecuted church, their faith. Lord, continue to give them that sight, that faith. We pray, Heavenly Father, that we'll see them through. We know many suffer. And perhaps we don't suffer the same way in this country, though we feel that Christians are marginalised, put to one side, ignored in this country. Help us to be a light, even in this day. Help us to be salt. We pray. We do pray for people on our prayers, that long list of names. Lord, you know their situations. Help us to help them where we can. But Lord, remember them, we pray. Beryl Reynolds, Brian Wood, Daphne Lake, Shirley Ryder, Clive Watt, Ben Chapel, Alan Kruger, Remember Tony, this is what didn't happen on, on Saturday or Friday, Saturday, but again he's been given another day later in the month. Help him, be with him, we pray. Steve Adams, the news we have heard on his situation, the good news we have heard on his situation. Colin Hickley, Janet Hickley. Sonia, Matthew and Daniela in America. Still remember Peter Clark, strengthen him, we pray. And Sylvie, Jim, Gillian, Martin, Peter, Green, and Sue and family. Lord, as, Mark, as people, their names come into our heads, we bring them before you. Remember them, we pray, Heavenly Father. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. We stand and sing, from heaven you came, help us <coughs> save.
but it must be an attitude I give off. I could try and defend myself, but I won't. <laughs> what about Jezebel? A scheming, manipulative, arrogant woman. We mentioned the other week, are you a Mary or a Martha? If I said the name Daniel to you, what would be his reputation? That's Daniel of the Bible. Then. What would his reputation be? What would be his reputation that comes to your mind? I've written down loyal, faithful, prayerful, fearless. You must have been on that uh, uh, seminar yesterday. But now you may wonder why, why from these passages, those two passages from Mark, I've headed or used reputation as my heading. Well, we'll, we'll come to that. But I suppose it's really asking us to look at ourselves and what is our or what is your reputation. I'll be blunt, if we call ourselves a Christian, are we Christ-like? Perhaps that's just so that is just looking at it on face value rather than in depth. Or if I can put it this way, do you tick all the boxes? We have our good days, we have our bad days. But my observation is that quite often our character that day depends on how much sleep we had the night before. Our toleration levels differ. Reputations can change. If I use the term young, free, and single, don't take that the wrong way, but more to suggest there's a difference uh, you have when you get married, and then again, when parenthood comes along. As I've wandered a bit there, haven't I? But uh, let's just think about Saul straight Paul. Perhaps he needed that name change. You remember his conversion on the road to Damascus, him being against Jewish converts or Christians, so much so he sought them out to bring them back to uh, Jerusalem for judgment. But Jesus revealed himself to Paul in a perhaps we could say a personal way. Paul, Paul, why do you persecute me? And in an instance, Paul went from anti to pro. You will recall he was blinded, wasn't he? And got led to Damascus and uh, was told things by God. And then the Lord spoke to a man called Ananias, a convert there in Damascus, a disciple. Go and place your hands on Paul to restore his sight. What does Ananias say? Well, basically, I've heard about Paul's reputation. I have heard many reports about this man and all the harm he has done to your saints in Jerusalem. But you have to be told, no, do what you're told. That's Ananias. Then again, when Paul started preaching that Jesus is the Son of God, Jesus is the Christ, all those who heard him were astonished and asked, isn't he the man who caused havoc in Jerusalem among those who call on the name, on Jesus' name, and hasn't he come here to take the prisoners? And then a little bit later he goes to Jerusalem himself. He tried to join the disciples, but they were afraid of him. His old reputation lived on. They asked, I'll put it like this. Is he for real? Because perhaps that is for us. If it is, praise God. We've changed. And people have to ask, is he or she for real? Well, what's the change all about? Your witness. And you give 
glory to God. What about Paul and his Jewish status, his Jewish reputation? Well, let me break into Philippians 4. Paul wrote, if anyone else thinks he has reasons to put confidence in the flesh, or just to so I saw it there, what does he mean? Uh, his, we could say his Jewish uh, standing or reputation. You, know, you won't beat my reputation. I'll go back to scripture now. I have more. Circumcised on the eighth day of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, the Hebrew of Hebrews, in regard to the law, a Pharisee, as for zeal, persecuting the church, as for legalistic righteousness, faultless. Now, my words, my words, Paul now says, so on. You may think that's a bit blunt, way of summarising the reputation, um, that, but he felt that reputation didn't stand anymore. He wanted to know Christ, know Christ as my Lord. He did have righteousness, but righteousness which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness that comes from God and is by faith. So how did I get into this theme of reputation? Was it the change of occupation? That reputation that Jesus said to Peter and Andrew, experienced fishermen on Lake Galilee. I know there are some times when they go out fishing and don't catch anything. But they were experienced professional fishermen, partners in the trade with James and John. What did Jesus say? Come, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. Well, they left their nets and followed Jesus. Well, I was caught by the words of John 3, verse 17. We have the list of the 12 followers, or disciples, who were to be designated apostles. It starts with Simon, to whom Jesus gave the name Peter. There was another Simon in the list, Simon the, the Zealot. So we've got Simon the Fisherman and Simon the Zealot. Solution, call Simon Peter instead. Now, I know there's more to it than that, but uh, that's what uh, comes to my mind. But then it goes on. James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John. In brackets, to whom he gave the name Boanerges, which means sons of thunder. So James and John's reputation was sons of thunder. Whoever it was given at this time of appointment, or given later, I don't know this, Mark wrote this down. Jesus, of course, knew their character from day one. Or was it, as time went on, this characteristic came out? As I thought of this, was it a nickname? There's a big question mark there. You might say, how could I think of Jesus? I hear some of you say, give someone a nickname. Sons of thunder. What does it mean? Is it a positive? Is it a negative? What is conjured, conjured up in your mind? Well, think about this. But sons of thunder, would you relate that to the Apostle John, whose gospel, letters, and revelation we have? You might say, yes, there is still straight talking here. Would you say their reputation changed under the influence of Jesus and the Holy Spirit? The time spent, time reflecting, time during the time serving. Before we think 
of what sons of thunder might mean, let's look at a couple of stories about James and John. There's one found in Mark and one found in Luke. I notice they're not in John's Gospel, but uh, as, as it is. I'm going to read a fair bit, but Mark 10, if you've got your Bibles, you want to follow it. Mark 10, verse 35. And as we read this, we might have to ask ourselves, was this out of character or in character? Then James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came to him. Teacher, they said, we want to do, well, we want you to do whatever we ask. Let's just see what happened before here. We'll see that the previous verse, Jesus was, or well, the previous verses, Jesus was predicting his death and that all what would happen to him and all what would, would mean. So verse 35 starts with then. Whether there's a bit of a break or this was the next conversation, I'm not sure, but uh, you'll see. Had they really heard what Jesus had just said? Then James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came to him. Teacher, they said, we want you to do whatever we ask. What do you want me to do for you? He asked. They replied, let one of us sit at your right and the other at your left in your glory. Well, we might say, where did that come, request come from? Jesus said, you don't know what you are asking. Can you drink the cup I drink or be baptised with the baptism I am baptised with? We can, they answered. Did they really grasp what Jesus said? I might be doing a disservice, I don't know. He goes on, Jesus said to them, you will drink the cup I drink and be baptised with the baptism I am baptised with. But to sit at my right or left is not for me to grant. These places belong to those to whom they have been prepared. When the ten heard about this, they became indignant with James and John. Jesus called them together and said, You know that those who are regarded as rulers of the Gentiles Lord it over them, and their high officials exercise authority over them. Not so with you. Instead, whoever wants to become great among you must be your servant. And whoever wants to be first must be slave of all. For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. That verse, verse there is very relevant, and we sang in our last hymn, didn't we? What about this incident in Luke? Chapter 9, verses 51 to 56. At that time, or at the time, or as the time approached for him to be taken up to heaven, Jesus resolutely set out for Jerusalem. <coughs> And he sent messengers on ahead. He went into a Samar Samaritan village to get things ready for him. But the people did not come, did not welcome him, because he was heading for Jerusalem. When the disciples James and John saw this, they asked, Lord, do you want us to call fire down from heaven to destroy them? If you read the footnotes, even as Elijah did. You do not know what kind of spirit you are of. For the Son of Man did not come to destroy men's lives, but to save them. But Jesus turned and rebuked them. They went to another village. Mark 9, 36.
Teacher, said John, we saw a man driving out demons in your name and we told him to stop because he was not one of us. Do not stop him, Jesus said. No one could do a miracle in my name and in the next moment say anything bad about me. For whoever is not against us is for us. I tell you the truth, anyone who gives you a cup of water in my name because you belong to Christ will certainly not lose his reward. Now to be fair to James and John, Jesus called them to follow, they followed. Called them to be apostles, um, which they fulfilled. Mark 6 tells us that Jesus sent out them to go preaching with authority over evil spirits, which they did. It says they went out and preached that people should repent. They drove out many demons and anointed many sick people with oil and healed them. Sons of thunder. What does it mean? You may tell me afterwards. But thunder. Were they loud, forthright <laughs> preachers? An image you might have of the Reverend Ian Paisley. A lot of finger pointing and pulpit thumping. Why do I say that? Well, in a Bible dictionary, I looked in instead under thunder, thunder was regarded as the voice of Jehovah and gave several verse references. Who dwelt behind the thunder cloud. Thunder was, to the mind of the Jew, the symbol of divine power and vengeance. I wonder text of one verse there, 2 Samuel 22 verse 14, for example. It's a song of David. Uh, the Lord thundered from heaven. The voice of the Most High resounded. Thunder, thunder. Do you see that as a positive characteristic? Or do you see it more as being hot-headed? Anger. Fire from heaven, speak first, think second type of person. Whose goat is got easily. Who are not sensitive. Who are abrupt. Riff like me when you've not had enough sleep, as I mentioned before. Sons of thunder. That would be perhaps a negative characteristic. What is a call, or then a call to calm down, calm down. A hymn came to mind, or a verse from, take time to be holy. Take time to be holy, be calm in thy soul. Each thought and each temper beneath his control. James and John, us, is anger management need big question mark. Perhaps there are times when we should be angry, but perhaps not in our everyday living out. Paul writes in Ephesians 4 verses 31 and 32 under a section headed living as children of light. Get rid of all bitterness, rage and anger, brawling and slander, along with every form of malice. Now I'm looking at you lot. Brawling and slander, along with every form of malice, as well as anger, bitterness, rage. No, it can't be you. Now it goes on. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as in Christ God forgives you. If you want a longer version of this, then read and meditate in Colossians, uh, I haven't put the chapter down there, but it's 1 to 17. Do I that up there? What is your reputation? Well, if you've read that bit from Colossians, you might say, they set their hearts on things above. 
or if you want it as a text, as we heard last week, recorded in Matthew, but seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. What is your reputation yesterday? Your past life maybe? What is nation today? What's your reputation tomorrow? Questions I leave with you. But I can't finish with that, can I? Because we remember this verse, or if you're familiar with certain translations, how it's put. Philippians 2, 5 to 11. Christ Jesus, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. He thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, and took upon the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself, and became obedient unto death, even the death of of the cross. Wherefore God hath highly exalted him, and given him a name which is above every name. But at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow, of things in heaven, and things in earth, and things under the earth. And that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Amen. What is your reputation? They were a good practice, this. They were a good witness for Christ. So let's sing this hymn. Go forth and tell, O church of God away, God's saving news to all the nations tell. Amen.